So in this video, we're going to show you how to remove this underlayment here that goes to the front of your bay on a 377 Grand Design MB so, so we can gain access. I've had a water leak. We just discovered we've been getting a lot of rain here in Florida. So don't know exactly where it's coming from. I know that the roof is pretty decent shape. So we need to replace the insulation that is wet. And I did a process of elimination thinking that it was a washing machine. So I went ahead and called the manufacturer Splendid to get me a, a blueprint of how it goes in and how it goes out and also a schematic of the whole machine in case I need to go ahead and look into it. And so they did. And so I went ahead and put the washing machine on stilks and checked everything, checked to make sure the inlets are not uh, leaking. Uh, also where the hose are connected, the, the water pump, everything. Everything came with flying colors. In fact, that was one of the reasons why I didn't want to have an RV with a washing machine because I've heard so many stories from people and how they, their floors got ruined because of the washing machine. But we've been blessed. Uh, I tell you, we love having the washing machine. And so uh, at least we know that that's not the problem. So after the introduction video, we're going to go ahead and show you how this is done. So if you need to do it yourself, then at least you have an idea. Again, I'm not a professional. I'm just showing you how I'm going about doing it. So like that, you guys uh, can have an idea what's the process. Um, I will need a second person because, you know, it is kind of big and all that. My neighbor's kind enough to help me out. Let's play my introduction video and afterwards we'll show you how. So stay tuned. You see here we're going to be removing this plastic here there's a few screws this corner is going to have to come out and then we're going to take this guy off here see it just comes off like this and then there's some screws that we're going to be removing and this is sealed or caulked so i flat some caulking that I've used in the past from GE, clear cock that we're gonna go ahead and put on here. And then these screws has to be removed. And then of course that little bracket that holds the door. And then we're gonna be removing that switch, just a couple of screws. Same thing, four screws for that vent, that's the battery vent. And then we're gonna take out this door frame, which it has screws throughout. I'll show you here in a little bit. So, there's some screws along this door frame that's connected to an aluminum beam in the inside. You can see it here. It's connected to this aluminum. So this is the insulation that I pulled. And that insulation, as you can see, it's up there. And that's how come I knew it was wet. So you can see we're going to do the blue tape all the way around and we're also going to do the inside just to have it ready. One less step to worry about. So here it is, all taped up. Just so when I put the silicone, it doesn't get onto the body. So. Oh yeah, I guess I need to do this edge too. Just like I did there. All right, so it's all taped up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this plastic off. I think there's a screw here. We'll take it as much as we can. We gotta take that screw off. We'll pull it out like this. Take this little claw, just kind of separate it a little bit. You can 
and see. Well, and that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just label these and with the screws, tape it all together. See, I'm gonna put here up. As much details, so then I'll be able to know where it goes back. So I'm gonna do that to the other side, take everything off, and then I'll get back with you guys. I'm gonna make it to the right looking forward, because some of them on the plastic already has the word R for right. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it the same. So I changed this. So this will be right, uh, right goes on this side, left will go on that side looking out towards the truck. That makes it a little bit easier. So I already took both corners out, took this corner up here in the front, which is right there, you can see. And it had a little bit of water there, so I wanna make sure I do some good caulk in there. So I had to take the door off by taking these two screws off here. That's the hinge there. And then there's some in the middle and on that side. So here, I'm finally getting it. Just coming around the back. Just put a little pressure. There you go. Tough. Ah. Well, and it doesn't help that there's two screws that I miss, which was under the rubber, which I could not see. That's what was holding it up. So that's why. Well, there you go. I'll go ahead and put those screws in a different area. There's the other one right there. So <laughs> this bottom track here, only had three screws holding it up. So as soon as I took it off, you can see this skin's coming, coming apart. So I took the screws that was holding it there. So really, it's good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get some help. So I got this off, got the screws that were holding on the skin up here. This little latch did not have any cock, nor those had any cock. I'm gonna put cock when I put it back. And all that is removed here. You can see it dangling. And there's water coming out through here. You can see the water right there. So don't know if the water is coming through the track, but we'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the seal with the knife on both sides so I can remove this channel. Go like this here. There you go. And just pull. So it looked like it started coming apart once I took the railing off. Got my buddy Bob, he's helping me out on the other side. So, all right, Bob, I'm gonna go ahead, handle the camera, please. So, lay it down a little bit. All right, let's see if we can come here and pull backwards. Okay, hang on a second, I got this tape. I got it, pull it from the top, Bob. The tape on the edge. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. 
Okay, hang on. Bob, right here, look in here. Take this, coil it up this way. You may have to get underneath so you can support it here, Bob. It's pretty, it's much in there. I'm coming out, yes. Pull it, pull it, get it from the edge. Pull it back. It's pretty. Okay, watch where you're stepping. Okay. It's all on you, Bob. No, it's not looking bad. I'm gonna clean it up. Yeah, so that's okay, but you were gonna to wanna to spray for the mold over here. So here we have our inspector. Our inspector is checking it out. There's muscles and there's the inspector trying to hide. <laughs> so this is what we came across. And uh, I think I found where the issue's at. So that's where our floor closet is at. There's a little moisture. We can see they kind of fell short. They put this black paper here, but nothing in the wood. But I have a strong feeling that this little trim up there is has a hole and the water's been coming in through here and then down in through here because this side was wet and not the other side so now i don't have to wait until it rains or i could put water to make sure that that's where it's at so what i went ahead and did is i cleaned this with bleach water and then use a brush cleaned it all out wipe it down clean and then I went ahead and put some spray paint inside so it's black. And so where they went ahead and where the wood is exposed, I actually bought this quick fix. It's uh, for windows and doors. It's a ceiling tape. And I'm going to put it there instead of plastic. So that'll bond to that. The, um, but I'm also going to be using this for this edge here. So I went ahead and scored it about an inch and a half so I can wrap it. Instead of using butyl tape, I'll be using this. So on this side, the fatter one, I'll be inside. I'm going to show you how to put this on. This is like a rubber membrane, self-stick. It almost reminds me of when you're on the roof and you got that ice shield. So basically, we're going to go ahead. I measured it. And even though I stick out, I'm going to, I'll trim it. So here I'm peeling it. So you can see what I did is I scored it. So this section is for this, and then this is gonna be my, for my edges. So now I'm gonna put my straight edge against here. So I'm gonna ride a little bit on this. Here. There you go. Then I'll take a knife and trim this out. Make sure this is nice and secure and I'll put the other one. So it looks like it got a little wider here, so I'm gonna have to put three pieces. So here I got from Home Depot this R13 that I'm going to go ahead and place in between. This here is 15 inch wide by 32 feet long and this is like three feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, six times three. And then I got these little cubby holes here which I'm going to have plenty. I think this cost me about $27. See now I'm doing the insulation and I'm taping it up, the R15. So it's, this is 13 inches, and I'm doing by four feet from here and tucking it into that. And there it is, all cut. So here it is, all insulated, taped up. We got it up, and with the help of one, two, three, Four and myself one she was really using her head because she's actually that tall she was able to just push her head up and able to put those screws up 
So that was a big help. So that's using your head. So now what we're gonna do is put the frame up. We're gonna put this on, but remember we're gonna put that, that tape to seal it. And then we're gonna cock it like crazy. And that's the corner I wanna focus on. All right, I'll show you in a bit. So we're putting this plastic here instead of the butyl tape. You can see here, normally this doesn't go all the way up to the corner. This is the butyl tape right here. And then after that, it'll look something like this. Whatever excess, I'll go ahead and cut and trim off. See here, we got the trim on already. And I'm gonna go ahead and cock this real good. This morning I went ahead and checked some areas that needed some more caulking because we couldn't see. So just like on the top there, the door and some of the edges. But this is how it looks like. It's wavy, it's because of the insulation. And uh, I may consider putting some more screws in the top area. Just want to make sure that I cocked it real good. Especially this area here. This is the area of concern. And I also, I also did it up there by the gutter. Cocked it real good in case there's water coming this way. But this is the area that I mainly was concerned about. So I went real thick there. And you can see I put the beat all the way around. It started to rain. And so we're finished here. And hopefully that will solve the problem. We won't have any problems with mold now, new insulation. Now, one of the giveaways that we had an issue was our floor right in front of our closet. Since it's particle board, it started to cave in a little bit. So I am gonna go ahead and put some Bondo just to kind of make it even. It's just a little bit and then I'm gonna put the uh, vinyl floor back down again. So we'll show you that in a minute. Now the Splendid machine, washing machine, just so you guys know, we have a video and you can see it up here where we had the issue with the gasket when we first bought it and it had mold. Well, you can check that video out in order how to replace it. But I did talk to the manufacturer and they sent me a whole schematic of the dryer and washing machine. So hopefully that'll help you. But now, hopefully now you guys can do this on your own. You will need some help, you know, at least three to four other people just to help you to remove the skin and to put it back up again. Otherwise, pretty much is a DIY as long as you got the right tools and the help. So this was the floor. Right here is where we felt that that was soft. So what I ended up doing was right here, I took a knife and cut it right at the seam where this wood plank looked like, right where the joint's at. Could have done a little bit better. And then I lifted this up, there's some staples and there's a piece of wood. I ended up cutting the wood right here because otherwise it goes behind this. So that whole wood came out and then the end of this was at the bottom here, so I didn't have to cut it there. I did cut it on that edge so I can peel it up. And then once I put some Bondo at Home Depot, they have this type of Bondo filler. I just put a tiny bit where there was like pits and it feels pretty good now. Because uh, I took a level and just right here is a little dent indentation. And then what I did was I bought the smallest tube. This is a uh, 7200 base bond. It's for wall base adhesive. And uh, it's still adhesive, it's vinyl. And then I got one of these guys that has the uh, 1 16th and uh, 1 32nd on one edge. So I use the 1 16th right here just to kind of spread it kind of evenly. I only did a little bit on that end and a little bit under these two so I get it here. So you can see it's it's pretty smooth. So I'm just using these weights to kind of 
hold it down and I only came my cut up to here so like that I can fold it back and it worked out perfect and so then I put some staples back in again so it's good as new so I'm really happy how it turned out and so that should resolve that but we found where another leak was coming from I'll show you in a minute so this is our window and we had some nasty rains lately and right here right in this corner water will be coming down going down the edge and kind of wetting the carpet so let me show you what I did in the outside so we've been having some nasty rains when it hits here it would come down so I went ahead and just put an additional see where the water's at because we've been still having some water some rain I sealed this whole edge heel on top but mainly right in this corner and I went all the way down and sealed that that's where my water was coming in how I know I took a water hose wet this whole side in the other side I put a tissue paper tape to the wall just to see if it would get wet so as I put water in here one on the other side sure enough the tissue paper was wet and it was coming down this way here so this corner on the inside was not installed properly it's nice and tight here but right here there's a huge gap about 3 16 gap that it didn't get tight so because of that I ended up cocking it here and so and I did both sides I hope this videotape helps you it's a process of elimination so you take a water hose and just wet it for a while where you think might be happening it's great to have somebody else on the inside in order to check and then uh, install it from there and you see these things are put up so fast they don't really do quality control so I'm hoping that with a combination of the leak of that window that was just that leak was coming down right here so maybe that was the water that was coming in and getting this all wet but with this here being sealed properly so a combination of this I had to remove the insulation and sealing that with a clear caulk this caulk won't turn yellow and uh, if you notice I went kind of heavy so like that uh, we won't have any uh, breach it's here so so I hope you like this video if you did give me a thumbs up and uh, that will help my YouTube channel and this video in order so other people can see it if you have any comments please put it down below perhaps if you had a similar issue with the bellies got all wet and uh, tell me what where was your leak at and uh, when I came to that area and also around the window if you had any situations like that because uh, this is how we can help each other because then you don't have to take the unit back in to get it inspected and before you know it you're two three four five weeks in a hotel waiting on your unit if you're a full-time RVer so I know that I couldn't find any videos and how to remove that underbelly but now you have this one so you can refer to it it's pretty easy sometimes I ended up putting my own screws because the screws that was in there wasn't really holding it tight like right in here so I put put my own screws wherever uh, so I can make sure it held nice and tight so guys don't forget there's more videos for you guys to watch from my channel and uh, we'll see you in the next one